Okay, this is the uh, LTI Ultralight 2020. They've come out with numerous variations of it, which you will see right here. You'll see this Ultralight LTI 2020. This is the 100 LR model. So this is spec for 5,000 feet of range uh, out here on the road. So 5,000 feet is 5,000 feet off of the semi going away from this laser, so traveling in that direction. Uh, and as you get to smaller cars, as a car, you may get 3,000 feet of range going towards you. Because cars and vehicles are made aerodynamically, you'll only get about two-thirds of that amount of range as you come towards it. There's not, basically, there's not as much reflective surface on the front of a semi as there is on the back, or as the front of the car, you're made for airflow to go over them, so there's not as much to shoot on those. So on a semi, you'll get about 3,000 feet coming towards you, 5,000 feet going away from you. On a car, you'll end up with about 3,000 feet going away from you you and about 1800 feet coming towards you. This laser here, as you see, when we pull the trigger, the power comes on. It goes into an internal circuit test first, kind of shows you that all of the laser, I mean, all the lights are working. You'll see that we are in the speed mode right now, you, which so when this laser is working, you'll see the speed and you'll see the range of the car. So that when I'm using this, if I get a speed of 55 miles an hour, I can visually be able to tell, okay, that car is about a thousand feet away from me. I make sure that the laser sight itself is not off. Uh, the, some of the different buttons that we have on this. We have the menu button. And as we cycle through this menu button, you'll see the menu brightness. That's the brightness of the reticle. You'll have on up arrows and down arrows to go from anywhere between 1 and 21 on the menu. You'll see that this says GS on or on and off. That's for a, uh, for, if we're using this for accident reconstruction, we can say don't give me any distances any farther than 10 feet or 20 feet, or don't give me anything less than 20 or 30 feet. So it helps you to kind of get rid of some of those ranges that we might not want on there. So you'll see GS long and short, so it's no distance is over a certain amount or no distance under a certain amount. You'll see that this, under the serial number range, you'll see that this is the spec of the thing, the 2020 uh, CR on there. Continuous mode. If uh, Right now it's set up for single shot mode. It basically means we pull the trigger and it stops, uh, stops transmitting as soon as the laser picks up a speed. If we put that into continuous mode, then it's going to continue to pick up a speed and constantly update as we're going down the thing. It'll continue to show 54, 55, 56, or if they're slowing down all the way through as far as this laser will track. And I'll show you how to do that here in a couple minutes. Uh, right now you have a mute on and off. When you hear this laser, you'll hear it beeping as it's trying to acquire the target. We can turn that on or turn that off. And then all on and all off features on there is for they have timing circuits on here to keep this laser to automatically power off after 10 minutes or 15 minutes. If we're writing out a ticket, we don't want it to sit over there and run the battery down the laser bench and everything to keep operating. So we have that as all on, meaning that after about a minute, the, the, micro, the laser bench shuts down, and after 15 minutes, the laser will shut down by itself. If I hit this into the survey mode, this modes, I have two modes on here. One for speed, and you'll notice the display of change for speed, and then I go to survey. So if I'm just needing to see how far, this is specifically used for accident reconstruction, so that I can see how far the skid marks are, how far a car was from, the, uh, from an embankment, or any of that kind of accident reconstruction stuff that you would use will be on this thing here. On this side, you have if, if I hit this and hold this down, you'll notice the laser comes off. If I pull the trigger back down, it'll power back up. So you can see on the display that I've shut the laser down at that point. Now, these buttons over here, you have a test button here. You see everything's lit up. This one here is the TT 
It is uh, for the, put, when you put them on a test setup, you can tell whether they're working properly. That is my battery voltage. It runs off of two C-cell batteries, so that should be 3.2 when the batteries are fully charged up. These batteries have been used just a little bit, so they're at 3.07, something like that. When they get down to about 2.5 or 2.6, the batteries will need to be replaced, and you have this battery icon that shows up over there to let you know when the batteries are getting low. And then this is a delta distance thing. When you pull the trigger down on this, you can move any of this stuff. You're, you can measure delta distance one and delta distance two, and that will tell you whether the LADAR laser is calibrated or not. So again, if we're pulling this, if we're doing this delta distance one and delta distance two, they're basically comparing at known distances to figure out if the laser is reading appropriately. Then, if we're just doing the RF out on this thing, that's another test procedure that you use while you're certifying these. Those, most of those features aren't anything that you're actually going to use uh, just as the op standard operator. The standard operator, when they get this laser, is going to put this thing into survey mode. And they're going to get uh, what the book says is to get two known distances at about 50 feet and 100 feet and shoot this thing standing like this. And the, ra the laser should read within a half a foot on a 50 foot and a foot at 100 feet. And basically, this, this whole laser is based on the principle of, of, infra, of light and how fast light travels. So we know how fast light travels. So if I shoot this thing off of a 100-foot pole, the laser beam should bounce back to this laser in that set distance. And so it's just math at that point. And basically, if this reticle is aligned, meaning if I put this on a license plate of a car and this reticle is aligned with this laser bench in here, and the the timing circuit is correct, meaning it's reading the correct speed, uh, this correct distances at set distances out there. Then we know that this laser is going to work properly. So there's other there's other things we do when we calibrate and we measure the laser at laser output. Uh, we uh, go through this thing and we'll look at the uh, how this laser is aligned up with this laser bench, making sure that that's accurate and basically. Basically, the simple way of saying it is basically like a rifle. If you put a scope on a rifle, the, the rifle barrel is aimed one way and the scope alignment is, is there on another. Well, this is very similar to this. This laser bench is aimed out there. Well, we want to make sure that this dot is actually lined up with where this laser is lined up on there. So now, uh, let, me, let me go through and we'll shoot, we'll shoot a couple cars. So as this car goes past us here, we got this green car here. In single shot mode, you'll see I pull the trigger once, and this goes to 58. Now I have to re-pull the trigger again. Every time I pull the trigger, it's going to give me a speed, and it's going to give me a distance, which you can see the further they're getting out, the, more, the further that speed. If I don't hold this pretty still, I'm not going to get a speed at all. Those error one, error two, error three, they're all errors that relate to if this laser is moving around a little bit, then I'm, I'm not going to get a speed. This laser sends out 200 pulses a second, and 97% of those have to come back with the same speed. So if I'm moving this laser around, I may go from hitting their license plate to the bumper to other things on there, and I'm getting a slightly different speed. So I really have to hold this thing still uh, to really get a good speed here. So if I'm right here, here, let's get this truck here. And you can see 52, 52. Most of these vehicles just passed us. They think we're running, writing out tickets, so they're kind of uh, being on their best behavior. Let's get this car coming towards us. You can see that you get a little bit, you don't get as much range because one, we're not shooting straight down the line because these cars are kind of going at an angle. So the light's really reflecting off the front of them and bouncing back here to the left. Now, if I take this through like before and I go down here to continuous, uh, 
I turn it to continuous on, this next car that we pass, you'll notice continuous shows up here on the screen. This next car that we pass, you'll see how that I'll just hold the trigger down and the speed will continue to update as they go by. So on this one here, you can hear the beeps off the laser and it's continuing to update. This semi here, they, they provide a very good surface on there. So you can see as that's, it's updating maybe about every half second, it'll update the speed on there. And as it's updating the speed, it, you'll see that the, the feet and how many feet in there is changes as well. And then you'll notice if I move this around a little bit, I'll start getting these errors in here. You'll notice I'll get EO1, EO2, EO3. If I get this reticle lined up, So let me put this thing back in single shot mode again. And then I'll put it back to there. Now if we want to just use this in survey mode, basically you'll notice here at this point we're just going to shoot this little telephone pole out here in front of us. Uh, if I can hold it still enough. So if I'm just doing that, I can shoot it on the back of one of these cars here, and we'll, we'll see how many feet out they are. You'll notice 336, 527, and this basically the further out they're getting, the more you're gonna see that the, the survey change on there. Those are all the basic features of this laser. Now, as you notice, this laser, we're not shooting through the glass because these lasers, these lasers are not made to shoot through glass. They're using infrared light. So if you put it through a piece of glass, that light is gonna refract and go in different directions. And so there's a couple lasers that are currently made that'll still do that. But basically, if you, if you shoot a, a normal laser through a window, you're gonna get about a 10th of the range you normally would. If these things are spec for 5,000 feet, you're going to get three or four hundred feet of range is really all you're going to get out of this laser. This laser here, more about the background of this, this laser has been out about about 20 years. So this LTI makes everything from survey equipment. They made Bushnell range finders at one point in time. They make, uh, they make survey equipment. They make proximity lasers. Anything having to do with a laser, uh, LTI is the world's leader in this. So they've sold uh, maybe 60 or 70,000 of these things out there. They make a, la a laser cam version of this. If you ever see one of those out there that'll actually have a camera mounted up here on the side. And so as this laser, it overlays the laser onto a video image and they can go back and catch screenshots of the car, 70 miles an hour, and it overlays all of that onto a picture. So it shows the laser actually working while they're writing you out a ticket. This laser itself works off of two C cell batteries. So you'll see here, we just slide those two C-cell batteries in there. And then of course your, your laser is operating. So there's no, uh, this model is unlike a lot of the other ones. There's no, you're just using two batteries. There's no proprietary battery packs. This is the option for a shoulder stock on here. So I could pull this shoulder stock out, stick it into my shoulder, and make this thing a little bit easier to use and hold still if I didn't have a car or something else on there. Um, 
that's this port here. People ask what that's for. That is the data diagnostic port or for the factory wants to reprogram this laser, they'll use this port here. This is actually, there's a speaker in behind there. That's where you're hearing all of your audio. And then through this lens here, this is a polarizing lens. So if I pull this off, you'll notice that there's, you can see better through there. This is something you adjust. So if you're really bright in the day and the sun's in there, this will kind of take some of that off there for you. It's polarized, so however you adjust this, you'll see it getting brighter or dimmer, that kind of thing. Um, that's basically all the features that we have here on this, on this ultralight. Again, this is a refurbished one that we have. We just kind of use for testing. Um, if you all have any questions, let us know.